that we've now been Have you ever wondered, can you communicate directly with spirit guides, teachers, or non-physical consciousness, or even our higher selves? What would they tell us? My name is Kevin Moore, and since 2015, I started to practice a form of communication which is termed channeling. I have been interviewing experts on my talk show to find out does life continue after we die and can we communicate with those that have crossed over? With each expert I spoke to, they all had different ideas. Is there knowledge from the past which could be shared with the present moment? So I thought, why not just speak to the non-physical world directly through channelers around the world? And that's what I set out to do. They call us channelers will take the viewers on a journey into the phenomena known as channeling. And my main goal with this docu-series is to bring a new understanding and awareness to channeling by looking within ourselves and asking, is it truly possible that we can all use this innate ability? I moved to Malibu, uh, oh my God, from New York City about 14 years ago. Wow, from New York City. Well, that was a, a big change then. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure there's a whole journey here, right, as to how you got there. Well, sure you know, you so have, you, whether the, the journey is the physical journey, what comes first, the physical one or the spiritual one, sometimes you have to, you have to change your environment first before you have that internal switch that happens. And some people, they know they belong somewhere else. They know they don't belong in their city anymore. They have to venture outwards. And that's what happened to me, even since I was a little kid. Growing up in the Bronx, I was born in Harlem in New York City, and then I was raised in the Bronx. My parents came from India and immigrated to New York City. So for me, it was growing up in that powerful, intense energy of New York City. And I was this shy kid who was having psychic experiences in a city that you can get really lost in. And it was actually something that worked really well for me because there's so much stimulation in a place like New York, especially in the 70s and 80s when I grew up there. It was a different, New York was a different animal, a different beast then. And it's not necessarily the, the environment that you think you're going to find a psychic or a channel or a healer, if you want to use that word. Oh, absolutely. I look at your story and I just think to myself, oh my God, there's so much synchronicity in bits of my life as well that, that I've seen in yours mm. and th which is kind of strange because I didn't expect that and especially what you just said there as well about you know sometimes for us to make that shift in our life whether we're going to go into our next purpose or whatever it's going to be that we know it's pulling us there is that thing isn't there about moving you know it puts you in a different headspace doesn't it be and before you can make that shift you've got to go somewhere else sometimes I get what yeah, you're saying there exactly sometimes yeah. Look, sometimes you can't always make a spiritual breakthrough first when you're when you're changing your life. Sometimes you just need to cut your hair. Sometimes you need to shave your head. <laughs> sometimes you need to change, uh, you know, the colors that you wear or change your name. Something has to happen that you at first think is superficial. But yeah. sometimes we human beings were such visual creatures. We need to see something to stimulate, you know, those uh, cones and rods in our eyes and send new signals to the brain. One of the biggest things that I teach as a shaman is to constantly change things up. And I don't mean every day. Every day you can do little things. You know, brush your teeth with the other hand. Uh, take a different way to work. Um, wear the thing that you have not worn in six months. It is when we become stagnant 
is that when we start to just die, that's what it is. And as a medium, as a channeler, I'm often asked, well, so what really happens after we die? I go, what happens when you really start living? That's a better question. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the question they asked you, you know, before you answered that was almost they don't, they don't want to be here. Do you know what I mean? They don't rather not. I don't blame them for not wanting to be here. Absolutely. <laughs> so no you could easily <laughs> no see, you could have a long list of reasons not to be on in earth school anymore and you want to just graduate or cut class or burn the school down or wish it was never there. And then there's a lot of reasons to stay. So as, as I've been channeling all these years, what I have seen from the messages from the spirit guides have been always about how to have more peace during what you might perceive as chaos and how to have peace in the creative process of existing. It's a creative process. Anyone who's watching knows that every single day you have to create something, you, whether you have to create your breakfast or you have to create money or you have to create a better relationship or you have to figure out how to speak to yourself in a more powerful way. Most people know what they need to work on. But I think what happens when the spirit guides come through in channel is that they're first they're receiving a, receiving a confirmation from a source outside of their personal circle. So you... Sometimes people come to my Circle of Light, which has been happening every Tuesday for 14 years, over 2,000 channeling circles. And at my channeling circles, everyone gets a message, a personal message. The guides that I channel don't just speak on uh, what I call inner technology. They speak directly to people one-on-one, -on -one, answering personal questions, whether it's connecting to a loved one or it's about something that they're st stuck on, whether it's in their body or their mind or their spirit. And they're taking this wisdom or this knowledge or perspective and they have to sit with it for a while. So the theme has always been, how are you creating your reality? How do you even perceive reality? Yeah, you've said some really important things there, and we're going to get back to some of those points as well, especially, uh, you know, existing in peace during these times as well, which we'll touch back on. So um, just going to your, your shaman um, sort of path as well, your shamanistic path, I, you've said in previous interviews that you, so you sort of, you know, you, you kill people off, you know, and then you bring them back, bring them back to life in a sense, to the life that there's, you know, that, that's more in alignment with where they and what they really deeply want to experience. It is, you know, I consider human beings, I'm a human being, I consider all of us as programmable beings. We are programmable. We are programmed by, you might say we're programmed negatively by things. Whether you think it's negative or positive, you're still programmable. And I feel that this is a blessing, a gift, not a curse. If you are programmable, that means you're deprogrammable and reprogrammable. You've been programmed to eat a certain way, then you have realizations, you start to see how it's affecting you, and you start to deprogram and reprogram yourself. So you can continually do this. So I see that this is enlightenment or spiritual knowledge for it to be actually wisdom, right? Put it into action. It has much to do with how much you're actually willing to listen and how much you've how much you've been broken open. I, I always tell people, your superpower is your brokenness. My, my superpower is my brokenness. When people say, how do you do what you do? How do you channel? Or why did you become a shaman? I go, oh, because I, I broke a million, in a million pieces. I broke into 10 billion pieces, shattered guts on the floor. If you're not willing to do that, <laughs> it's the difference between someone who can just help you and someone who can really help you rebirth yourself. So when someone comes to me when they're, sometimes just people need a little encouragement and sometimes people need, uh, the engine needs to be taken out. I, I think I'm a, like a, a mechanic or a, um, a locksmith. You know, you get locked out of your house. You call the locksmith. It's not their house. I just help the person who's frustrated. How many people have locked themselves out of their house and you're waiting for hours for the locksmith to come and you're frustrated, sitting slumped against the wall, just waiting for them to come. And then they come, they open the door and you take a deep breath and you go, thanks. You pay them the money and then you go in, right? At that point, maybe some people have realizations. Do I even want to be in this house? Why, do I, why am I going through this? The locksmith's job is 
not to take you to my house. I'm not taking you to my temple. I can take you to my temple and show you around. You can get design ideas and use them for your temple. But it's your creation. And over and over and over again. And like it or not, this is what the spirit guides, I think their messages are. And what their purpose is. And I know we have a, you want to talk to me about so many different things. So I don't want to, I don't want to keep going on, on to things. But I want to hear your questions too. I want to hear you speak as well, so don't worry. Uh, yeah, we've got I've got a lot I want to ask you, and and I know we've always got such a little time. Um, I just want to direct people to first of all uh, your website, which is rizmirza dot com, and riz is spelled R I Z, and my last name is Mirza M I R Z A, and uh, that website has everything you would need to know about working with me or just about me. Yes, and now you've got links to uh, your social media platforms there as well yes. and your YouTube channel, which has got a lot of uh, great content on as well. You're regularly Thank updating you. that. I would suggest that people do subscribe to that. It's in the link below in the description below. Everything we're going to discuss here will be in the description below as well. And again, if you just go to uh, the, the website mentioned there, we'll mention that throughout the podcast. So you still offer sessions, obviously, now, because you do your um, your live sort of um, sessions. I think that's, is that from your house that you're doing that right now? Yes, in I'm, sitting in, yeah. I'm sitting in my house right now, and all over here and <laughs> is uh, couches and candles and crystals and all the things you would think would be in a channeler's house are here. <laughs> and so people come on Tuesday nights, and it's been that way for a long, long time. And um, I tell you, I... I my readings that I do psychically are on the phone, so I only do one-on-one -on -one readings on the phone because I don't need to be in, in front of the person. Um, it's, I'm not really tuning into the person in that way. I'm just tuning into my guide. So they could be sitting in South Africa or New Zealand or China. It doesn't make any difference. Um, the messages will be the same whether in, in the room or not. So you offer the one-to-one -one stills with the psychic um, yes. uh, readings, Those and that's psychic. obviously bookable. Yeah, that's bookable through your website. Yes. But with the channel readings, you don't really offer one-to-one -one for them. That's a sort of, maybe if people were there in person or if they're in the circle, because I think they can view the um, the events live, can they? Can they the, stream there's it? a live stream, stream live? every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Los Angeles time. And um, the, the channeling, you know, we have been wanting to, to stream for a long time. And just now, you know, COVID, you know, has brought us some awakenings, haven't they? Made us, some of us really had to figure th things out again. We had to go to Zoom. We had to um, figure out how we're going to put things back together in life. So n now, even though the we're doing it in person, we're still offering people to just, it's free. Just go to YouTube on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and you'll see at least the first 20 minutes of the circle. The reason we don't do the entire two or three hour circle is because there are personal messages. So we just, we don't want to broadcast anyone's personal message. We just do the opening message for the group. Along with that, I do international retreats. My wife and I have been, my wife is a shaman also and an empath, a highly gifted empath. And we have been leading retreats all over the world for many years. We do Egypt twice a year where we channel. We channel on, on the sand at night in front of the pyramids and at different sites uh, in Luxor and in Aswan in Egypt. <clears throat> Excuse me. And those messages are always about the purpose of what these structures or these energy vortexes were and are. And we go to India and in June we're going to Ireland to have a mystical retreat and understanding the, the ancient Celtic and pagan druid rituals and and philosophies so we go from one end of ireland and come back another and then uh, we're in japan next year so there's lots of really amazing stuff going on all and the the thread through all of the retreats is my channeling which i do several nights and the entire purpose of the retreat is not only for people get a break and get to uh you know take a really deep dive into their spirituality but also to do it in a group with like-minded spirits. So I invite anyone who wants to come join us to go to the website and take a look at those amazing retreats. I would as well. Um, and I think if um, people are drawn even to come see you in person, then that can be arranged you know, via the website as well. So if people are, happen to be in California. Yeah, it's called the Circle yeah. of Light. So when you go to my website, you look for live events and the Circle of Light and there are different dates 
and you can just come sit here. And the groups are small. We don't we don't do large groups because I want everyone to be able to get a personal message. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. Uh, yeah, again, all those links are in the description below. Now, um, obviously, you've got a uh, we've all got a backstory, right? <laughs> Does it really matter the backstory so much? I'm doing more and more of these interviews. And I'm my thinking, backstory uh, maybe, is maybe it doesn't. <laughs> my backstory is interesting to me at least because I my backstory yes, was yes. I didn't have a psychic grandmother or parents that were taking me to sound baths and you know things that were that are considered spiritual. My my parents were academics. Yeah. And um, I didn't, though I come from the in, from India, our family comes from India, the tradition, of course, is there is a belief in reincarnation. There is a belief in things that are beyond. But it wasn't really that much in my family, you might say. So that was, um, my backstory was growing up through television and the World Wrestling Federation and hip hop and heavy metal. And that's really what was my what inspired me and people go, Oh, those are your influences. I go, yeah, those were my influences <laughs> were, were rock stars and, and hip hop stars and television. That's what actually created my, my connection to, um, I want to say something that was more, um, imaginative. And why do I say imaginative? Are we saying that the spirit guides are imagination? No, but imagination is part of you are part of magic and magic is the expansion of your perspective to be able to see more magic that's magical too so my influences were things that you might not think would be my influences as a channeler i didn't have um, someone mentoring me um, to do this work so i was kind of out on my own i did meet a very influential channeler by the name of Alex Murray, who is still in New York City and really, truly one of the great channels of our time. And, um, and actually, I, have, I, I actually interviewed him for my YouTube channel, which we're going to put up soon. But, How cool is that? But I didn't study intensively with him. I was, just, I was just a person who went to his channelings to get messages on my life, on my relationships, on the band I was in because I was playing music. That's what led me to it. So media, popular pop culture, led me to channeling. Wow. So I think that's a different backstory than most people. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, uh, not to mention that, you know, I had three major deaths of people that were very close to me. And that... Well, that will do me, it. That'll do it, too, if yeah, you that, take it all, that, if you break that, through. That will, I be, yeah, well, I think um, was what I believe one, well, obviously one was your mother, which... Um, my mom, my um, brother, and one yeah. of my best friends who, who took his own life. And so this was, pain is an incredible opportunity to break through to a better and bigger version of yourself. It doesn't always happen, though. As we all know, because we've had people in our families or friends who, who went down that spiral and never came back up again. Yes. Mine ended up, my third eye, if you will, popped open through lots of pain, Earlier I said being broken into 10,000 pieces or 10 billion pieces. But there was a thread that was, I don't know if we're born with it. I don't know if it was me who was born with it. I can't say. All I can say is I do know that I had a thread in me that, and we can call it hope or we can call it connection. Maybe it's all rolled up into one, that there was some, something beyond this physical. And at seven years old, when I had, gave my first mediumship, Reading was just a little seven-year-old kid in me in a social situation with my mom blurted out, hey, an old man died on that couch. Yeah. And the, the adult stopped and said, what did you say? And one of the women said, yes, whose house it was, said, that's true, but how did you know that? I didn't know how I knew it. I didn't see an, a spirit sitting on the couch. I just looked at the couch and felt it with all of my being. So I just blurted it out as kids often do, right? From the mouths of babes. And that was it. And the woman said, do you, do you have any other message? And I just said, well, he's drinking tea and he's doing good. And, and apparently the man had died while drinking tea. And then my life went on to things that I called coincidences, things I would again blurt out, though no, no one ever called me psychic. Uh, it wasn't until much later in life, after a series of loss and looking for help, when I ended up at Alex Murray's channeling circle in New York City, 
And I was told I was going basically to be a channel and that I was psychic and I knew this. I, I played dumb. I thought this message wasn't for me. Sometimes a message is told to you by a psychic that doesn't really make sense till years later. Years, yeah. years. Yeah, and even at that time when you were doing the music, and I know that you were you were you were painting at one point as yes. well. Whether you still paint or not, yeah, I do. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You do. Oh, that's interesting. Yep, uh, NFTs. That's what I'll say. <laughs> right. Um, um, but um, it's what you where you knew that there was something else calling you in a sense. But it's it's that it's that well, I'm almost bravery, or it's almost like breaking out of your of it's the mind bravery. noise there's, or something there's like that. bravery in it there's but, bravery in there yeah, and there's but, desperation but, but though you, just to something to feel well, better yes i mean it, yes absolutely yes yeah the change you're looking for a change that's you're better looking than what for you a have change, this, so you just break open and you just go well i'll you know at the height of uh, what was the roughest time in my life right before i actually became a professional channeler psychic medium was the lowest point in life and where you think it, it can't, you've hit rock bottom in your emotions and you give up. And what happens in that giving up is the little, the channel in you. I always like to say that channeling, the word channel is like the word canal. It's the same word. It means an opening through which something flows, right? You have the English channel, you have the Suez Canal, whatever. It's the water is flowing. That has to open. So what pops your third eye open or what opens that space, that channel within you, usually has to be kind of a blast. You know, they, they, they put dynamite to make those, those canals. And pain is that dynamite and blows it up. I wish it wasn't. I wish it was more joyful things. But we have that too. You have a child is born. People have awakenings, you know. Sure. <laughs> someone, you like someone and they like you back. Suddenly something opens up in you. So this is how I, I see, um, if you want to call it how the channeler becomes a channeler, everybody has a different story, but I think that there has to be the breakthrough. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And I, and I always say that, you know, every, everyone's channeling in a sense. I mean, you know, the, the word is used so much more now out there, isn't it? And um, just even in the in, in TV, even movies and stuff like that, there's the odd um, thing can you said believe, about Kevin, we're at a time, 10 years ago, no one was saying, what's your spirit animal? It's on TikTok now. Oh my, tick I'm on TikTok also. I love TikTok. TikTok is not just, you know, cute animals and people in various straight states of undress. There's also um, spiritual TikTok. So if you type in hashtag spiritual TikTok, thousands of videos and young people People who are kids who are 13 or 14, people who are 13 or 14 or 12 talking about spirit animals or holding up a crystal or talking about the third eye to whatever degree of, to whatever degree of knowledge they have. I don't care if they, they're 90% off. The fact that they're just saying spirit animal makes me happy because it's just, right? Because they could be doing something else, but they're choosing to speak about this. So this is just in 10 years. So as you, as you said and you've observed so accurately, the word channeling is now, it's in vo the vocabulary of people. I've heard people who have no psychic belief system at all will say things like, I totally channeled this game, this volleyball game I played. I channeled this deal I made. I channeled the character. Yeah, I hear that a lot. You know, I channeled that right. character. You know, and, and I'm like, dude, do you know what you're saying? <laughs> right. Right. I think you do, but you but you don't. But you do. <laughs> you got it. You got it. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. you know how much yeah. further they could take it. So for me, as an artist and as a performer, um, growing up, that was my. I found art. I found singing, and that was a way to. I might say it was socially acceptable ways for me to let that energy out from that channel. Because no one, I didn't have anyone who could say, this is how you develop your mediumship. This is how you develop right. your psychic work. It wasn't until much, much later. And I was super stubborn. I used to get messages at channeling circles that I would be a channel. And I would ignore that part of the message and just go to, so uh, am I going to make more money this year? Or am I going to, uh, yeah. is this relationship going to work out? Or the things that we all 
want to know. Hey, I still want to know that now, right? You know, and I right. do this kind of work. Right? We all want to know that kind of stuff. And, right. uh, you know, it's, it's nice to get uh, someone to do the house cleaning for us sometimes rather than do it ourselves. But we all have the ability to do it ourselves. I think we just don't even want to trust the higher self coming through, which is just your voice sometimes. That, that wise and more loving point, what voice. You know, we don't want to hear it. We don't want to, you know. Right, unless um, they're giving us something. And you've spoken oh, yeah. to, so many, to so many channels that I think... I think you would agree that the spirit guide's job is not to give you what you want, but really to help you understand how you've created your reality, connecting the dots, understanding signs and symbols where you didn't think there were signs and symbols, and using that information inside of yourself. They are also giving, helping you, sending you, I want to say they're cheering you on, like you're getting it, you're getting it, put it together. Okay, here's the situation. Take out blame. Take out victimhood. Go to that this is part of your soul path. Nothing is wrong. Nobody did anything wrong. You're not doing anything wrong. Everybody's co-creating this. Now, put yourself in this position. Understand that you're on earth school. You're here for your evolution. Now, what are you going to do? The spirit guides bring you to that place. They will pull you out of the path of an oncoming bus once in a while, if you're not supposed to go, they will pull you back. I've heard people say, I heard, felt somebody tug my shirt. I go, that was your spirit guide. But so they, they do protect you in that way, but they're more about, they're like a personal trainer. They will encourage you to do those five extra reps, you know, of push ups, where if you're in the gym alone, <laughs> you might just do 10. The personal trainers are yelling at you. You'll somehow find it in you to do five more. Yes, yes, absolutely. I, I completely hear you, and I, I really do like your work. Um, and I just want to say this as well, just to remind people that you, you, do, you obviously, you know, you're from Indian descent. Yes. I think, well, actually, you, you, were, uh, you lived in India. I did. Not, which you I won't remember. Yes, guessing, but I do. Yeah, I'm very well. Oh, you do. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I speak. I also uh, speak Hindi re- pretty fluently. I thought you might. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes, you do. Yeah, because some of your retreats go back to India as yes. well. They did used. To, yeah. yeah. Yes. Indian in that's such an interesting place I would um yeah I've, I've got to go one day um yeah well, you just okay. put you just put it out there in the universe so you're going to uh, be sitting yeah. there with us <laughs> as we go across oh, that hey, country who knows right uh-huh. that would be, you'd be a great tour guy I'd, I'd love to sure to, to blog that once they release us from immigration jail that, that'd be great <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> which won't be long right <laughs> um so uh, no that's just a jail in my mind right now it's okay um so yeah so we yeah we've covered some of the the basic stuff as well and and I think an important bit of your your work as well is that you you're not going to take people away from their pain you're going to go through it and sort of you, as you would say um not well you release you, you it because yes release okay, it. that's the word so yes. think about there's two types of when you go for a massage right there's two types of well maybe there's three types of massage but we won't go into the third type so the two, there's two types of massage there is a massage that plays nice music and rubs a little oil on you and you fall asleep. And then there's the massage that's the therapeutic massage where the therapist puts their elbow into the knot. Now, if you understand what the purpose of that is, you will breathe and be still and wait for that muscle. It usually takes about 30 seconds for a very tight muscle to release once you apply pressure. If you don't know what that is, you're going to think the massage therapist is hurting you. And you'll think it's a terrible massage. Oh, get off me. I don't want that. I think that once you understand how to release where energy is blocked and it takes a certain amount of pressure to do that. So I I speak very... I think I speak according to who I'm speaking to when I'm doing a reading. I I think the spirit guides also do that. Boy, I'll tell you, I've seen people sometimes come to a channeling And the spirit guide, they're in really deep pain and they tell their story to the spirit guide and the spirit guide leans into them. And you go, this person is just lost this person and they're still grieving. It's been two years. The spirit guide is, what they're doing is they're activating because what is supposed to happen? Are they, supposed to, are they here for sympathy from the guide? They get sympathy from the ones who love them. That, this is a, that's another story. When you're in the channeling circle, you're here to heal, or unless you're here for entertainment. It is very entertaining. 
But if you're here for actual healing, then look, this is what's required. Straight talk. So what are you going to do? So I've seen the spirit guide say, so what are you going to do? Are you going to take yourself out now? Are you going to commit suicide? What are you going to do? Because you know if you commit suicide, we're just going to have this conversation on the other side. You just won't be in this room anymore. But the conversation with your guide is going to continue. You're not getting out of it. You are going to evolve. You're going to realize what oneness is for yourself. This is I've seen it happen. Then I've seen certain people come and they're like this in front of the spirit guides and namaste, I'm so glad and so honored to be here. And the spirit and you think the spirit guide is gonna also be like totally, you know, like in that vibe. And they do it again. And sometimes a person comes and they're totally down on themselves and they get lifted up. It's sort of I've seen the guides speak not to just soothe, but to activate. Yes. Which is amazing, isn't it? When, you know, I mean... Oh, it gets heavy, Kevin. It yeah, gets... Yeah. <sighs> oh, I can imagine. I, I, well, I can only imagine what pain, right? Yeah. Pain people are in that is undescribable to us, you know, that the loss of a loved one, that, you know, that they, they, they maybe died early or whatever. Whatever the, the terrible situation is. It offers so much is, perspective. Right? When you come to a group... Do, Sometimes oh, someone comes up to me and yeah. goes, oh, well, I thought I had a problem and I didn't even need a message. I just heard what was happening to other people. And then, yeah. some, and then some people come where it doesn't matter what happened. You'll get somebody who just had a gut-wrenching story. Yeah. And the next person is just so, yeah, so um, which house should I get? Should I get this house? Should I get this house or should I get that house? Uh, what stock should I invest in? And, but you can't judge that. That's where their concern is. And they're here for their own reasons. And it's been an incredible learning experience over this journey of close to 15 years oh, of channeling. Oh, God, I, I bet for you it has as well. And for everyone that takes part yeah, in it. Her or, question or his question yeah. about his dog, what bowl does he like and what, what adventure should he take his dog on or what is the dog saying, is just as relevant to his life as this person who just had their house burned down. Well, it's what you were saying earlier on. It's the peace. What what peace are you looking for? <laughs> is yeah. the peace with your dog or is the peace to accept that you've lost everything and that you can still carry on? Yeah. That and maybe at this point, you. yes. Yeah. And maybe this person's pain about losing their job is so severe that it feels like a death to them. And so yeah. what, what I'm in awe of I listen back to the recordings of the channelings because as a trans channel, I don't, have, I don't really have recall. I maybe remember 10%. So we have thousands of hours of not only recordings, but some of them are on cassette. I've been doing this this long. Wow. But I've listened back to many over the years and I am blown away. I'm humbled by and I've learned from how eternally patient and calm and wise the spirit guides are that even when a person is belligerent, they, are, they get belligerent because they're at their wit's end sometimes when they're coming for um, yeah. a reading. Sure. My circles are not about, um, for the most of the people who come to my circles, a lot of them are not in the New Age community. Interesting. They're not, maybe, uh, if there's 15 people in a circle, there's maybe two or three that are in the New Age community. The New Age community doesn't like how I talk sometimes. Sometimes. Well, the New Age are going through their own process, aren't they, as well? Of you course. Know? It's okay. You, you Listen, the New Age is not the New Age. It's the old age. The supernatural is not the supernatural. It's the natural. The paranormal is yes. not the paranormal. It's the normal. It's only paranormal to you, and it's only supernatural to you. To me, it's natural and normal. And the New Age is the old age to me. But... I was just saying that sometimes if you're too um, ohm, you don't get the message. So a lot of people who are at my circles, they're not from the New Age community, and so they need a new, a new understanding of what even is the spirit guide. The New Age people kind of understand more, but they want more sometimes more softer talk, and the spirit guides speak to them. It's not that the spirit, listen, let's just rewind for a second. I'm only talking about when the spirit guides get very strong with people. They're, they're completely funny. They're totally loving. But you'll see that for yourself. I like to explain to people why they get the messages that they get. Because they're here to give you a fishing rod 
and teach you how to fish instead of throwing you a fish. So I have to explain that a lot to people. And I go, look, just they're telling you, they're giving you tough love. They're, and then there's so much compassion. Oh, there could be someone who is so in it and they have so much compassion. So as a shaman, meaning the work that I do as a psychic and a shaman when I'm not channeling or in a trance, I'm as Riz, I, I learn from that. And I've learned a great deal from the guides myself about um, communication and, um, and just understanding the path that we're all on. We're all on the same path. We're all in the same school. Some of us are majoring in different subjects. There, there are certain required courses, right? Just like school. And then there are some electives. Yeah. yeah. That person took volleyball. I took uh, painting. But we all have to take love and relationships. And we all have to take money and finance. <laughs> and we all have to take self-hate. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. You can, I can add to that list if you want. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we, we do. Right. Your spirit guide. I just want to mention uh, Red Eagle Speaks. Mm. Now, that, obviously, that's one of your, your books. Mm. And Red Eagle is one of those spirit guides. Is that yes. Right? Red Eagle is what we call the gatekeeper, as I'm sure you're very familiar with. The gatekeeper is the one who is like the, the bouncer at the club who is standing outside and checking IDs and going, okay, you're in and you're not. And what they're checking IDs is, are there these um, low-level entities or are they actual guides coming into the body of this channeler? And that's what the gatekeeper does for me as a channel. Um, as a guide, he is absolutely the main guide that works with me. And Red Eagle has said he's worked with me from before this lifetime. And I wasn't, a, I wasn't a person who was particularly obsessed with Native American culture, great respect for it, but I, didn't, I wasn't a, a Native american file, you know, yeah. uh, um, if that's a word. But he, people always, not always, once in a while people have asked um, me, have you ever asked Red Eagle why he chose you? And he responds in true Red Eagle style, and he goes, so people could get two Indians for the price of one. This is the sense of humor. That's, yeah, that's great. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, no, that's, well, at least they've got a sense of humor, which I, you know, of course, they bloody have. Um, well, they'd have to, to be... <laughs> so that's Red that Eagle, but that's, he's not the only yeah, guide yeah. I channel, but he cha he's, oh, the one who, he's also the message bearer. So when you come to the Circle of Light, it's Red Eagle who's giving you the personal message. It's it's interesting they say that, that obviously that, that Red Eagle is also helping with um, almost, well, you kind of said, I was going to use the words discernment there, but that's not what you said. It's, it's, it's making sure that, that no low level vibrations are, are sort of, you know, uh, able to sort of get access. I, I, I have come across one or two channels that I have seen that energy with. I'm going to be honest. Yeah. Um, uh, it's 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 strange when you see that uh, when someone that's got that ability has let that come into them yeah and, and is wor working with that where one minute they're switched on and they're given a reading um that's really empowering actually and 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 there's truth there and the next minute they're abusing the, their power yeah it yeah it happens yeah. it does it does and I'm, that's why I'm, I'm kind of validating what you're saying there after seeing a hundred now well, well more than that um yes you just, you know, it's a level of, I do have to say, it is a level of skill. At that point, it is skill and where you're coming from within yourself and the amount of work you have done on yourself. But that's so true. And this person hasn't done the work on themselves. Right. And they're willing to work and wanting to work with it. It's not like they're taking over. It's that's the move. This is, this is a, this is a, an, uh, I'm okay, mate. Yeah, that, that, this is. Let's do this because I get something out of it as well. Because well, it's like friends. You can hang out with friends, you know. You know, you <laughs> some people get in a gang because the gang is giving them love. So, but you're in a gang. That's the problem. And so, yes. you know, so there is. The, what's the context of it? How 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 badly do you want to um, keep exploring and learning? I feel. Uh, I've never had any any of those entities in me or um, low-level beings ever come into my body because I spent a lot of time in study and practice before anyone ever knew I was a channel. 
Nowadays, person goes to a three sound baths and suddenly they're a sound bath healer. Or they get a Reiki certificate and suddenly they're a healer. I love Reiki and I love sound baths, but be for real. A certificate does not make you a healer. This industry, psychics, channelers, this, it is an industry. It is. Okay, people make money and people pay for services and all of that. So it's an industry. And even in the medical community, you wouldn't trust every doctor that has a medical degree behind them, do you? You, you go for a doctor you trust. You, you have people tell you, oh, you got to go to my doctor. Wait, don't all doctors graduate from medical school? Shouldn't they all have the same amount of knowledge and practice and skill? What are you talking about? You have a good doctor. That should be so outrageous to humanity that you have a good doctor. When we have an entire educational system with rigorous testing to make you a doctor. But it's not the case. There are terrible doctors who have degrees on the wall. And people still go to them. And maybe they've helped some people. So what I'm seeing in the, the trend has been that, oh my God, I've had people who've just taken a few classes with me and then go out there and, and start promoting themselves as mediums. When I know they barely got anything done in my class. But it's not for me to decide. The people will decide. The people will decide. Do you get clients? You get clients. They like you? They like you. They don't? They don't. The voice that I've always believed in that, you got to know your own skill um, and be really clear with that. Other people will also tell you their experiences. But this is something you take time with. You don't just take a class or two. You have to live this. You have to live it for it to be impactful and powerful. And people will know the ones um, if you who have processed it, the healers who have processed their lives. You can feel them. They should. Those those healers will have an energy and a power about them that you're like, I want more of that. And you're also slightly unnerved by them. You should be slightly yes. unnerved. That is true, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm with you there. Even as an interviewer, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, if you're um, going to learn from Bruce Lee, he's so not going to just be sitting there the whole time, you know, putting his arm around you. There's a part of you that's going to have Absolutely. reverence, like, whoa, this is, uh, <laughs> he's a killer, but he's with me, so that's good. <laughs> so there's a, kind of that feeling in any teacher, whether you're learning tennis, you know, they whiz that ball by you. You're like, whoo, okay, wow, <laughs> I got somebody here. There has to be some life, some firepower along with the love and the magic. So you're going to go see a medium and uh, they've only maybe got a couple of years experience behind the belt, right? Because they've just been honest about it. You know, they've, they've been doing this for a couple of years, right? Um, and they've seen so many hundred clients maybe. Um, where is that sort of level of like, okay, well, you know, they've put 10,000 hours in, for example, which you don't need to do. I don't feel you need to do with this work, but it, it is helpful, isn't it? The more, you, how do you give readings if, if you, if you, um, if people would just say, well, you know, you've not done enough, uh, readings in a sense, or you've not put enough time into okay. this. Um, it's not about experience at that point, because when I first gave my, my first reading, I didn't have a lot of experience doing professional readings, but I was on. And if somebody's on, they're on. I was walking down the street with my wife on Third Street Promenade 14 years ago when no one knew me. And this homeless guy is laying. We walk by him. He's laying on the ground covered in what you're covered in when you've been homeless for years. And he just, in a stupor, he looks up at me and he goes, you're a medium. I wasn't even a professional medium then. This guy wakes up from his stupor and looks up at this guy he's never seen before and just says it out. Spot on. He doesn't have any experience. There's just a, a natural truth there. It's just, just on. It's just a natural truth. Are there, but here's the thing again. You could be the best at what you do and some of the best of anyone, the best of anyone, not just mediums, the best 
tennis coach or the best chef or the best restaurants or the best, what is the best? So, I mean, not everyone is going to have the same experience. I'm sure there have been people who had, have had readings with me who were like, yeah, it was good. And then some people were like, oh my God, I'm just like, their life has changed. That happens with everyone. There'll be some, your favorite thing or you, something you think is the best, another person may not see it. But with mediumship, mediumship, psychic work is a little different. Mediumship means you're connecting to someone who's crossed over. Anytime you're at a mediumship reading, this medium should be able to tell you at least a couple of things that are very specific to the person that has crossed over. Not just that they love you and they're seeing you, which is always true, and that they're with you, but something specific. And that's how I, I gauge whether they have two days experience or 20 years. Was that mentioned in the reading? And any medium, another word of advice to everyone who's watching, anyone who guarantees you that your loved one is going to come through a reading, I wouldn't do that reading with that person. No medium is in control of who comes through in a reading. I, some people have come to me for a reading from, you know, let's say their sister. They come to the reading, and it's the neighbor who passed away, it's the teacher from fifth grade, it is the dog, but it's not that person. I can't make that happen. So I ask people before a reading, and on my website I say, just try to send psychic messages yourself to your mom or your dad who's on the other side. Hey, I'm going to do a reading with Riz on, in two months. Would you mind being there? So, and I tell them, if, if I don't get anything, I can't, I'm not going to say something I don't get. We need to all relax and understand the messages will come in exactly the way they're supposed to come. But the trend is right now, as everybody is very interested in these modalities, and I support it, and I want everyone to know more about the metaphysical, naturally there's going to be people rushing into things. And then there'll be other people saying, slow down, really learn this um, if you want to be really good. Well, thank you for that great advice there. I think um, all the years that you've been doing this, um, you know, you just can't buy that kind of uh, experience sometimes. And, that, and that, that's really yeah, and don't you know? Don't get yeah. obsessed if your guys are trying to practice being more psychic. Don't get depressed if you don't hit the yeah. mark all the time. Sometimes you'll give a message that isn't true at that moment. It hasn't come true at that moment. When someone does a reading with me on the phone, I have them take notes, and I say there are things that you're going to hear from my mouth today in this reading that are going to make complete sense: names, dates, places, situations that I'm going to tap into. And there'll be some things that are not going to make any sense at all. That are not going to ring any bells. You don't know this person's name. You don't understand the significance of that date. You don't know why I'm talking about red shoes or something. <laughs> but keep the notes. And every six months to a year or two years, check on those notes. I can't tell you how many times someone has written to me who I don't remember and says, I, you gave me a reading seven years ago and it was, it was good. And there are a couple of things that I just thought, nah. But I just wanted to write you and tell you I am enrolling in clown school now <laughs> or something like yeah, something was totally the out, of, <laughs> out of left field that yeah. I said that I don't remember. Like I said, you're yeah. going to go to clown school. And they were like, this guy's crazy. Uh, clown school sounds fun to me. Um, I, okay. And I want to say as well that when you do give a reading the readings that you do give to people that you know the, some of the information coming through that, that's the path that they're on right now that you're tuning into right it's where they if they, if they stay where they're going to go in their lane this is where you're going to end up so do you want to change it or not but you won't say that but that is your free will yes and how to deliver a message is very important as well because i do meet people who get a lot of downloads who are just starting but they can't really give a reading you're sitting with someone for half an hour to an hour when I first started, I would just get two messages and it was a three minute reading, five minutes, and I would explain it. And that was it. Yeah, and, right. you know, so like anything else to, to tap in deeper and to understand how to go topic by topic in a reading. I teach this in my workshops also, that delivery is everything, delivery is everything, timing is everything, right? Yeah, because you teach um, yeah. um, 
how to be how to open I teach, up to you. I call it. I teach how to be more psychic. That's how I why I phrase it that way because it's a process, and it's not about being psychic. It's how to be more psychic. You're all psychic. You all have a third eye. This portal between your eyebrows. Your you can call it your pineal gland, but it's just a space of energy, um, an ability, a muscle, if you will, that you can open up and expand more. Of course, through meditation. Of course, through breathing, but also other modalities and other things you can learn on how to think about it. And so this third eye opening, your portal to your intuition, is something everyone has. Um, I liken it to singing. So everyone can become a better singer, even if you're not, maybe you're not meant to, you know, be whatever singer you think is great. You're not, everybody's meant to be a Freddie Mercury or a, you know, an Ariana Grande or a whatever, Bruno Mars. But you can be better than what you are now. You can be a better singer than you are now by taking singing lessons to improve your ear. So when I say how to be more psychic, that's my online class, how to be more psychic, it's that you are just getting better at understanding this. It's not about you're going to be a professional medium. It's just develop. A, a, the universe has given you this capacity. So develop it more than it is now. Do you teach uh, channeling at all? How to channel? Or is that I do. That it, done yet, I, do. Yeah, um, I do. Yeah. Because, but see, there would have to be something there to begin with. Meaning someone says, um, I've been having experiences where I'm, I'm speaking gibberish. This happens. People do it in their sleep or they will say I, something over, I was in meditation and I just wanted to just start making sounds. I go, okay, well, that's connected to channeling. Psychic experiences are different. Channeling, is, not all channels are psychics. Not all psychics are mediums. Not all mediums are psychics. <laughs> This is true. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we've all got that part of us that's a bit stronger than the other parts. And some of us, like yourself, has probably been doing this, if there are such a thing in past lives, many, many, many times before. And it's sort of second nature to you. They just reawoken to it again in this lifetime. Yes. Um, so, um, and uh, yeah, there's so much I, I want to talk to you about, right? And I know we've got T-I-M-E not on our side. And we want to <laughs> channel today, don't we? Yeah, we do. So, so I'm gonna. I'll, I'll say one final thing before we channel, right? Okay. What is the biggest thing that people are coming to you for right now? What do you think people are having the biggest issue with right now? If, the, if there was one that you're seeing, sort of, you know, in common, if there was something in common, what, who to believe, and that has a lot to do with how people feel about um, COVID and what it has brought up for people. Um, from masks to vaccines to how it's affected their lives, other than that aspect of their new relationship with their kids. So the last two years, that has been the big thing. Who, who to believe? And I make them even think even further about who to believe. I go, so you came here for who to believe, then you're going to believe me? Well, I'm going to tell you this. I think you've already chosen who you think you want to believe. And every side has their evidence that's very powerful for them. And every side believes their evidence is the real evidence. It's almost like you can't even escape that. And so people will pick it. They're picking their evidence versus over their friends, over their relationships. And that's what we're seeing now. But that's because they really want to know that they're safe. Am I safe on this planet? Am I safe to exist? Is this whole place safe? That's the biggest thing right now. Um, yeah. And then I would say that's probably what I feel as my feelers are out there. Then, but then when people come to me to actually work with me, it is because they're done with that and they know that they're here for a higher connection and they want to develop their gifts. So um, peace and then develop their gifts. Those are the two main reasons. <laughs> I just, I know I should be adding this on, but I just want to add it on. It's so, so interesting you said what you just said there. But if something's based on facts, you know, and people don't want to see the facts even, the, the, the facts of a murder case, for example. Well, mm -hmm. no, those facts are, they're not true. They're done by a court. Do you know what I mean? They can't trust them. Right. It's something as cra crazy as that, right? Right. But they're facts. You know, you can't, this is what was decided in factual 
caught in a sense, or even for the issues right now we go through with vaccination and COVID and everything else that we have gone through, or even what's going on right now with the Russian propaganda versus, you know, Western propaganda. There are facts, and I, I think there's almost facts with your work. Some people will say, well, Kev, what are you talking about? Of course there's not. You know what I say to people like that? I, t I actually announce this before my circles. I tell people, you don't need to believe in spirit guides to be here. And some people are like, wait, then why are they here? I go, whatever, I'm just letting you know. You don't need to believe in spirit guides for you to see the logic and the wisdom in a message given to you. And if it rings true anywhere in your form, just take the message. I mean... Ugh. What are we all, are we all here to convince everybody of what we're all doing? You're going to, everyone who does something is, are going to have their supporters and then their detractors and then people who are on the fence. Forget about your detractors, whatever you guys do, forget about your detractors. Just focus on those who are interested in what you're doing. And then some people who are on the fence, because that means they're a little just open. They just need more information. There's a word out there I saw recently, conspirituality. And I was like, yeah, oh, that's, wow. that's that's true in a sense, you know, the, the idea of like, you know, um, conspiracy mixing in with uh, spirituality. And that's, that's happened actually quite a bit in, oh, in this community. You know, it's the process, uh, right? It's the process of yeah. big shifts and big creation. It's going to be messy. Very messy. Yeah. Yeah, very messy. And that's where we, I want to take the channeling now. So listen, I'll let you connect. Um, yeah, we don't know who's going to come in. I've, I got a message that it would be uh, maybe two guides kind of switching. One would come and then another would come. And I take it you want to speak to them, right? You want to ask them questions about things. If they, if they just wanted a message, I've got just a few questions. This is, won't be nothing I long think questions and I... answers are great with them. That's what they do all the time. Okay. So uh, the two guides that I, I have been feeling all morning are going to come through are probably Red Eagle and then a wonderful teacher named Phineas. Um, so let's see what happens. And uh, give me a moment. As you know how this part goes, I drop in and then I'm out. I say goodbye and they say hello. All right? All right, here we go. And I, anyone who's watching this, I say, just really drop in right now um, and take a real deep breath here at the count of three. One, two, three, breathe in. Hold the breath, relax your shoulders and your face and just breathe out. That's what I do. It just helps you slow, slow down right now so that you get some value, uh, more value out of this. Okay, here we go. I'm Phineas, and I greet you. I'm so pleased to have you here. Thank you uh, for uh, arranging this for us. I'm sure you've played a part in it somewhere. And um, I think I just want to go straight to um, peace, peace within ourselves, uh, both externally and internally, especially in the times that we live in right now. We're, how can people live in their own version of peace with the world going through so much change right now? You have heard it said, and certainly in, was written by Mr. Dickens in his work, that it was the best of times and the worst of times. Are you familiar with that? Absolutely. And so, throughout history, at any time where the masses have been asked, are the times hard? The answer has always been yes. And are these wonderful times? And the answer has been yes by many of those who replied. And so, as evolution is the nature of reality, that means that it is expanding or using words that you tend to drift towards, that evolution is the growth, the expanding, the clarification, growing into a larger version of oneself, as a tree does. And so, perhaps, as the river flows into the ocean, the same thing occurs. And so, to see things as 
peaceful. One would have to understand what they are looking at and have a perspective of the process of creation and reality itself. For example, if there were, in your belief system, and perhaps there are, an extraterrestrial, a being who has come to visit the earth, and they are coming to visit you, imagine this scenario in your mind. And so they come from a planet, let us say, where there is no birthing, there are no pregnancies, let us say perhaps that they manufacture their physical bodies in a laboratory. It is possible, isn't it? For anything is possible. And let us say that is the background. There is an alien who comes from another world where there is no gender and they do not have live pregnancy or live birth. Have you got it so far? Yes. All right then. And so they appear magically to you. And you find yourself in the delivery room of a hospital. Imagine this, that you are invisible and your alien friend is invisible and you are privy to observing the birth of a human child. Let us describe the scene for you. Let us say that it is a c-section. You're familiar with the procedure, yes? And so you are watching the alien is watching. Very harsh lights to begin with, a very cold and clinical environment with people wearing masks where you only see their eyes. They are covered. They are wearing gloves. They seem to be a bit nervous, very focused. There is a woman laying there who is in the throes of her pain. She is gripping tightly to her partner who may also be in the throes of worry or nervousness. There is tension in the air. Are you following so far? Mm -hmm. And then you see these individuals holding their sharp metal instruments in the glaring light, and then they make an incision across her belly, remove her organs and her blood and guts, place them upon her chest, and put their hands in, as there are fluids and blood everywhere. What do you think the alien would think is occurring? Use your logic. Imagine what the alien believes is occurring. Feel the emotional energy in the air. See the physical environment. See the utensils the people are holding. Feel the emotions coming from the mother and father or partners. The alien would think it is a murder scene. Yeah, I was going to say fear, yeah. Great fear. And then, as the alien asks you, why are they killing this person? This is a horrid scene of great ugliness on your planet. And you would have to turn to the alien and say, actually, this is the most beautiful event that we experience on planet Earth. Is this right here? The alien perhaps would disappear, go off back into their ship and leave this godforsaken planet thinking, how could this be the most beautiful thing? The most beautiful experience as human beings have often said it is, haven't they? Birth. That actually what was occurring was the encouragement, the support using technology that is available through the discovery of human innovation to be able to have a C-section, to create an environment in which that procedure could be done with great proficiency. So that everyone is safe and the baby is delivered, cleaned up and placed now. The organs are put back in her, she is sewn up and everyone is happy and able to live their lives in peace. For the question was about peace. But the process of peace, to those who do not understand it, will look like a disaster. Those who are alien to it. And so then, what is peace? Peace for you, perhaps, would be at a blaring, loud rock concert. There are many people who are very peaceful there, and many people who are not very peaceful at a symphony. Peace is within, isn't it? Peace also has to do, not only is it within, but that which is within 
that feeling of peacefulness is based upon whether or not you agree with what is happening. If you do not agree with what is happening, you do not feel there is peace happening. If it is against what you believe, then you no longer are peaceful within yourself. Then what do you do? What do you do? Do you join them? Well, that would be against your beliefs. You do not want to join something, some movement that you believe is wrong. But you are on a planet where most would never change their allegiance even to a sports team, no matter how much the sports team has lost. Individuals go to a sporting event. One team is winning, correct? Always. Each person wants their team to win. They are rooting for their team, cheering with great vitality and force. And let's say the team then is losing. Now that person who is supporting the losing team is having a terrible time, no peace at all, correct? Right. And they came to have peace to this sporting event. They came to have the feeling of winning. Imagine then to turn to that person and say, well, if you want to feel winning in peace, why don't you root for the other team? Actually, that is quite logical, but not emotionally logical for the person hearing it. What do you mean? I will never root for the other team. This is my team. And I will stay with them whether they lose for the rest of my life or not. Then why do you like this team? If they are performing poorly, well, they are from my city. Correction, most of the players on that team are not from your city. They were hired by your city to play for that team. So they are not from your city. So what exactly is your allegiance based upon? The idea. The idea that they are from your city. The idea that you are one with their team. Knowing full well that if they are offered more money from another team, the player from the losing team would happily move to the winning team if they were offered the right contract, correct? But loyalty is the name of the game for those who are fans of that sport. They are loyal to their teams. Even the players themselves are not loyal to their teams, are they? Unless they are working and being paid for that team currently. And so is it an illusion then? Or perhaps, what is the illusion? That the entire thing is about loyalty. For the fans it is one thing, for the players it is another. And for the owners it is another. Yet everybody wants peace, but peace looks differently to all of them. The one thread is that they should win. And they feel that if they win, then everybody wins. Is that true? Not at all. If you win, the other loses. You do not wish for them to be a sore loser, or you will judge them. And so this never-ending battle, until, of course, one awakens to oneness. Yeah, and, it, and isn't that the real answer, actually, that we are all one? And um, gosh, yeah. If Well, for the majority, obviously, you know, they're not able to or don't wish to see that. So, uh, and that's the path that we're on to, to see the opposing. Wish to see that. Opposingness. They do not wish to see it the way others wish to see it. They wish to see it the way they wish to see it. Oneness, you see, cannot be avoided. You will always come back to oneness. You will move through your emotions. Think of yourself individually. Forget about the rest of the world at the moment. Think about yourself. You wish to be at one with what you do. You wish to be at one, hopefully, with the ones who are in your families and your closer associates. You wish to be at one with your body. How do you know this? Because at, when you are not feeling 
good in these areas, you feel disconnected. Now, are you connected to the fabric of life itself at all times? Yes, you are. But you see, you are a soul. You are an individual. You have your own energetic signature in this reality. Therefore, you have what you come to call free will. And so, you may resist the flow of something. It does not matter what is happening to you. Your resistance is what creates your reality. For example, you all have been embraced in a hug by someone. Now, if you were angry at that person, though their arms are around you, they are hugging you, they are wanting to connect with you, but if you are angry at them, your energy shall resist the love or the affection from that hug. Correct? You have experienced it. All have experienced this. You're angry with someone, they come to apologize to you. And you do not wish to accept it. You do not accept the hug, though even your own arms might be around them, they are hugging a lifeless artifact, so to speak. Until you hear the right words from that person. The apology then would have to be sincere or there would have to be some sort of peace offering from that person that then connects to your understanding of what is a peace offering. And then you begin to surrender to the hug. Your arms are already around them, but you were not meaning it. Therefore, the flow, the energy of surrender was not there. Therefore, no one felt really good. Once you release resistance, then there will be an embrace. And so much of the work that the individual needs to do is not even to surrender, but to surrender to the idea of surrendering. Because the word surrender has been dragged through the mud. Surrender usually means that you have given up. That the army surrendered, therefore they lost it all. To surrender is not admired in your society as of late, and yet you wished to surrender to love. You love someone and wish they would surrender to love. You wish to surrender to abundance. You wish to surrender to authenticity. You wish to surrender to the flavor of something being put in your mouth. So your path to victory is through surrender. Quite the opposite of what you were taught, that surrender means losing. We are telling you that the surrender leads to victory. This, what are you surrendering to? You are surrendering to the perfection of where you are and what you are experiencing is all for you and created by you from a higher place. The higher place is not a place of physical elevation. The higher place is actually a deeper place within you. When you are ascending spiritually, you are actually going deeper. So spiritual ascension is not this way, it is this way, within you. You feel it here. You do not feel it here or here. You feel it here. And so to drop in within yourself, to slow things down, slowing your reactions down. You cannot slow these things down, but your reactions can then bring you to a place of stillness and calmness where you begin to breathe. The sign of life is that there is a heartbeat, that there is breath. That is how you check to see if something is alive. Is it breathing and is there a heartbeat? If there is not, try to revive it. When you are choosing paths, I wish to know. Should I do A, B, C or D? We say develop your hearing and let your nervous system become more sensitive. Your sensitivity is your strength. The greatest artists, the people that you have admired the most, who were wonderful at whatever it is that they did, became wonderful at what they did through their sensitivity. You want to be a better painter, be more sensitive. You want to be a better singer, be more sensitive. You want to be a better accountant, be more sensitive. A better doctor, more sensitive. A better anything, you must be more sensitive. A better partner, a better, better son, a better daughter. Whatever it is that you wish to be better at, become more sensitive. Your sensitivity is your superpower. The intuition, in a sense, the, the that voice that comes to you, that sensitivity of whatever it is you're feeling, you know, it's you know, like the gut feeling is what they call it, don't they? They say sometimes. Yes. Now understand that your gut 
is also programmable. Be very careful about your gut feeling. Because your gut can be wrong. This is something that is very similar to animal instincts. You admire animal instincts. And yet, all of you have experienced wanting to show love to an animal. Let us say it is an animal you have just met. And you wish to give it some love, whether it is a gentle hand or some food in your hand or loving words or energy and the animal backed away from you, maybe even hissed at you or barked at you or growled at you. They did not trust you. Their animal instincts were that you were not to be trusted and yet you know in your heart you only were offering love to the animal with no intentions to harm it. Quite the contrary, you wanted to protect it, perhaps even give it a new home. Its instincts were wrong. It saw you as a threat when you were not one because its gut has been programmed by its interactions with others. And so gut is different than intuition. Your intuition will not be programmed. Your gut will. Your intuition is free from blame or victimhood where the animal would blame you for harming them and feel that it is a victim of your actions or energy. That's different, yeah. Um, Clarity. So, so definitely worth considering. Uh, absolutely, it's a different yes, way of Yes, your intuition about it. is not your physical body, nor is it your intellect, nor is it your emotions. It is something else. It is free. Okay. Well, while I've still got you here as well, just very quickly, <laughs> as quickly as we can be, right? Um, what is the current term? Um, what what is, with what we're going through right now? Um, with uh, Russia and the Ukraine yes. and the bigger implications of all that, right? Is this part of a great change that that we were destined to go through and there's 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 more change to come in a sense because we're shifting or we're trying to... This is part of us growing up in a sense. We're trying to change... Something, something larger is, is, is moving something forward and I'm not using words here, am I? That's not very helpful, but... Your sincerity and your sentiment with wanting peace between nations is authentic. And that authenticity that is felt around the world carries within it a vibration that will emanate. Some will take longer. You are asking in essence, when will the bullying or when will the tyranny stop? When will dictatorships stop? And as you also understand, that that which is above shall be below, and that which is within the microcosm shall be in the macrocosm. Those who threaten and fight others and wish to control them is really for a various, let us say, it is a myriad of reasons for they wish to control, for they feel threatened that they are not the powerful one, that there is something they need from this person or this nation or some entity, an institution perhaps, which you often see in legalities, when they are fighting over something. And so, one then begins to wonder if love is the solution here, and is it possible for love to truly be a vital, contemporary, powerful force, rather than some old, outdated idea that is idealistic, when one says, more love in the world will save everything. And yet, certainly, if there is more love felt on all levels, then there is more than enough food to feed everyone. It is simply a lack of love that will not distribute it. More love, relationship with yourself, more love. More love also means more clarity. It does not simply mean that you are complimenting yourself all the time. Love is clarity as well. And the willingness to understand and become more clear that is all a part of love, you see. And that is what makes a great painting have more love and they wish to express and show you the colors more. And in the case of war, you are in a stage of evolution, certainly, where war is still and violence is still part of the process. Can you go to lessons learned in oneness beyond violence with each other and violence with yourself? Can you learn powerful lessons from two squirrels playing in the grass rather than you had to be hit by a car. Everyone knows that his 
watching this transmission that they have had to learn difficult, painful, hard lessons, perhaps repeatedly. And then they feel that they had to learn it that way. Yes, in alignment with the amount of resistance that you had at the time, that is the only way you might have heard it or seen it. By the time it comes to the physical body, when you have an ailment, whether it is a headache or you break a leg or perhaps something more serious, by the time it hits the body, it is because you have not paid attention to everything else, the other signs that were telling you it's time for a breakthrough. So more and more people are learning the connection between their physical ailments and the spiritual reasons behind them. Now, you've just given my aha moment. Do you know that? Aha. Mm-hmm. You have. Yes. And eventually, as Buddha found out, he turned his aha moment into a ha-ha moment. <laughs> That, 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 yes. He was always laughing in his statues, isn't he? With his big belly out, his big belly out, and his hands on his stomach, and his head thrown back in laughter. What was he laughing at? Perhaps what is referred to as the cosmic joke. And the cosmic joke is not a joke, but a joke, a good one, reveals a lightness of perspective about a particular truth. That is what a joke is. And so... In Buddha's laughter, what he is essentially and purely showing as example is that death itself was not real, that pain and fear was transitory, and that what mattered most was love, which he knew all the whole time from the moment he was born, then he forgot and then he remembered and he forgot and he remembered and then when he remembered and realized and actualized, it became his truth. And that is the place that he began to live from. Yeah, that, that, that's going to be the main message, I think, of my news network is love. The, the, the International Spiritual News Network that I'm going to eventually set up. It is already being set up. Kevin, it is already being set up. It, it, it is, funny enough. Yeah. Do you know, that came to me, I, I, I was given that the, the idea of the International Spiritual News Network through uh, a regression back in 2014 in, in Holland. And, um, and, it, and I've never, well, it's, it's with me right now. I'm still talking about it, right? Yes. And, um, but the, the aha moment you gave me there was imagine the news, you know, interviewing the Russians. Russian people in charge or, or some charge somewhere and asking them about that. Where is the love? Do you love the people that you're bombing and killing? You know, where is the love for the people that are, that are in pain right now? Can you feel that love at all? And what is it that they feel they are losing? If they do not do this, they feel they are losing something. Well, yes, they'll, they'll, they'll very properly state what they're losing, which is everything that, that they would state. But yes, that of course they do. But uh I, uh, is, there, is there a place to get past that? The, the idea of, you know, okay, so you're losing something. Okay, but the, the core of message in what you're saying right now is love. To, yes. to do the actions that are being done right now, it is unloving, regardless who started what, when, and where. The eternal truths remain that you shall do unto others as you would like them have them interact or do unto you. And this was channeled through prophets, and in various languages, at various eras, not only in your biblical or your Abrahamic religions, but in many tribal religions, these beliefs exist. And so, that is where oneness has always been the thread. Through your teachings, the eternal truths remain. And love is an eternal truth. In fact, perhaps the only eternal truth that exists. But what you see as love and how you surrender to it and see love in process is very challenging to be able to see that during times of war or even when you are at war with yourself. And so as this conflict escalates, the wonderful thing about humanity, and there are many wonderful things, is that there are realizations that happen. They may not happen in front of you, but people's egos, you see, are the ones they display in public. And those who surrender, they begin to dissolve that. And certainly, the generation that is coming up, as you say, currently, they are less judgmental 
for they have exposed themselves in so many ways that they move on from scandals very quickly, don't they? Where those who have scandals today may continue to be prosperous. And those who had scandals in your time as a young man, their careers were ended. And now you are coming to the very complex idea of cancelling each other. And that is, that is a culture that is sort of like a culture in a petri dish. It is a bacterial culture. You have been doing it your whole lives. It did not begin with now. Presidents were forced to resign in the past. That was a form of cancelling them. It always existed. You see, it is just simply more public now. And the networks that are created for information sharing have allowed more people to gather into more movements together. Therefore, it seems to have more energy. But all the questions that are coming up about acceptance, about love, about behaviors, about projections or ideas of what a gender should act like, or those who have money or no money should act like, or a certain race should act like, are all being challenged now. And that challenge is simply where things open. And as it has been said, the old idea that the cracks in you are to let the light in, we would say perhaps, but what could be more true and more powerful is that the cracks in you are to let the light out. Well, I, um, I just want to thank you for um, sharing those wonderful messages that I, that I know are going to be so helpful, not just to myself, but for, for anyone listening. If there's anything else you wanted to say to end this on, then it's yours. But uh, otherwise, just thank you so much. Bless you. Be well. Well, thank you so much uh, for the extended time that you've given me as well. <laughs> that was that, that was some deep conversation there. I'll, I'll Phineas just say is, that. Phineas is amazing. He's been coming through for many years now, and, and uh, he teaches a whole course called uh, The Science of Manifestation. And um, you probably could find it online. I think we put it up, actually, for everyone. You can just get it. I think it's just a... I'll try to yeah. find it in the link. I'll put it yeah, in the link. Yeah, it's on my website. Yeah. Wow. So great to talk to you, Kevin, and, and to be here with all of you guys. Thank everybody for watching, and um, and I'm so glad you're... I just want to say I'm so glad you're doing this show. Well, thank you. Yeah, I, I feel that I've um, barely covered your work, right? And, and look at the time. We're an hour and 30 Well, we have all year. Uh, we can come back anytime you want. I'm happy to talk to you, and I, I'm... Grateful. Actually, I'd like to do that if that's if you want the truth. Absolutely, I would like to do that. We'll do it. Yeah, well, Red Eagle will come next time. Red Eagle, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna kick out of Red Eagle too. <laughs> Most definitely. Well, let me just close this off and just say thank you for coming on Day Callers Channels. Thanks for having me. Blessings, everyone. Be well. <laughs>